All right. Well, good morning. Um, happy uh, first Sunday of Lent. Um, yeah, it's Ash Wednesday was this past Wednesday. Uh, for those of you that joined us, um, I hope that was an encouraging time. I know that sounds maybe a little bit weird um, for Ash Wednesday to be encouraging, but the whole idea is that we are preparing ourselves for Easter because, yes, uh, resurrection is coming in the church calendar. So let me, so let me, let me help you just for a minute. Uh, Ash Wednesday, Lent, these kinds of things, for those of you who haven't been around with us, the, the reason why we've determined here, and I know not all uh, you know, typical Protestant churches may not follow the church calendar, um, we do because the whole idea is that ultimately the church, the, the, the faithful people of God, um, follow the beat of a different drum than, say, culture. And so that's part of the way we do that. That's really what Christmas and Easter have always been. Um, there's just more to that story. There's just more to Christmas and Easter. And there's more, sorry, let me rephrase that. There's more to the Christian story than simply Christmas and Easter. Um, and there, and we, we just seem, we, we have determined that we would follow through on all the church calendars, maybe not all of them, but others of them. So Ash Wednesday is the beginning of Lent. Lent is 40 days, not counting Sundays, um, that, that is representation of Jesus' days in the wilderness, which, by the way, is our text for the sermon this morning. Um, so the idea is that we find something that y- y'all might find something to set aside, something to, to fast, and we'll get more into that in the sermon, but that you would set something aside and say, you know what, I'm going to, I know, I know a lot of people that might say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set aside processed sugars, or you know what, I'm going to forego my coffee, or you know, whatever, something significant that says, that, that kind of marks the moment in time. It says, okay, I'm setting that aside. And again, we'll get more into that in the, in the sermon about what the idea is to set something aside or what even fasting is. Uh, but that's where we're at, so that's where we'll be for the next several weeks le- leading into Easter. And I hope you'll, you'll spend some time thinking about that part of the story where Jesus, remember, 40 days in the in the desert, in his temptation, 40 years for the Israelites in their uh, wandering in the wilderness, um, 40 days, 40 nights, Noah's Ark, you know, all these stories that conjure up the, the, the number 40. So that's where we're at, and that's what we're going to continue in for the next several weeks. But until then, hear this invocation, and then, and then Sarah's going to come with some announcement, but not before I've got a couple. Well, actually, sorry, let me let me just have the couple. Let me put the put my mind out there first. And that is that Easter's coming. Oops, wrong one. Let me find my stuff. Easter week. Monday Thursday, we're gonna celebrate. If you remember that, Monday Thursday, um, that was the Last Supper, and then we have that we put big long table across this room so we can all gather at the table and celebrate. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday service we'll have. This is all part of that Christian calendar that I'm talking about that tells the story. Easter service, you guys were back on uh, for our, our Easter breakfast that we do. So um, it'll, it'll be earlier, it'll start earlier, um, but we'll have breakfast before Easter, uh, before our Easter worship service and all that. So those things are coming. Um, we uh, have historically baptized some Folks, on Easter, if you have not been baptized, if you want to be baptized, please talk to me, Pastor Shree or Kristen, um, and we'll and and we'll work it out. Um, we we intend to have a couple of uh, classes, if you were lack of better language, but we want to talk you through it, what it is to be baptized, and what that uh, means. Again, it's part of the Christian story. So if you haven't, if you desire to. Please talk to one of us, one of your pastors, and we'll get that going. Okay, from there, now, hear this invocation. Almighty God, you have called us to prayer, 
and you, had offered, and you have offered yourself to all who seek your face. Would you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us today to deliver us from coldness of heart, a wandering mind, and wrongful desire? By the power of your Spirit, place within us steadfast love and devotion, so that we might be a people who worship you and serve you with all of our being. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Uh, Micah, do you have do you have that? Okay, I'm going to read that one more time, and I want you to own it. <laughs> um, maybe as you hear it, personalize it. Almighty God, you have called me to prayer, and you have offered yourself to me, who is seeking your face. Would you pour out your Spirit upon me today? And deliver me from coldness of heart, a wandering mind, and wrongful desire. By the power of your Spirit, place within me steadfast love and devotion, so that I might be one who worships you and serves you with all of my being. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Kristen, a couple of celebration funds. Good morning. There it is. Hello. Um, I next time, guys, we need some whoops when we're getting ready for celebration fund, okay? It's it's a celebration, it's not a funeral, okay? Which is often also a celebration, but you know, okay. Um, two things to celebrate today. Well, lots of things. I hope that you choose to celebrate with us. We want to celebrate with you um, for the low, low price of any donation that you believe fits your celebration. So um, you can buy yourself some marketing time. The first thing we're celebrating, um, Chris Vinton is very excited that we hit 60 degrees, guys. And for one Wednesday, there's no snow in the forecast, so we might actually have church. It'll be good. Uh, <laughs> come on out. And then also, um, Casey and Kara Ziegler are celebrating that. Kara is halfway through this round of chemo. Yeah, yeah. With that, um, I'm not sure where we're at with sign-ups for Kara, for bringing meals, for bringing gifts, um, but... If you'd like her phone number or her address to just drop something off, um, you don't have to wait for a sign-up to bless someone. And that goes for everyone in the church. Um, and that goes for people in your personal lives, too. Um, people love getting little gifts. People love getting meals for their family. People love being thought of. And you know who else loves it? Jesus, when we bless our neighbors and our people. So keep that in mind. Think of ways, especially throughout the end of winter here and going into spring, how you can maybe bless your neighbor, your community, and maybe the person sitting next to you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a quick update from last Sunday. Kara had texted me. We were texting back and forth, and she's halfway through her journey. So praise the Lord, and we'll continue to pray for her as she goes through this next phase. And uh, thanks for that, Kristen. It does mean a lot with the cards, the food, the drop-off. So when you can't get out, it means a lot when people are thinking of you. So that's great. Okay, just a couple of announcements coming up. Um, we said this last Sunday, but the QR code is out there for the bulletin. So I just cover like high level. Bulletin has more detail. So I try to just cover what's coming up. There's stuff on here that's going to happen April, May. I, is that too soon? I say too soon. So um, anyways, so there's more details in the bulletin. But let's talk about what's happening today. There is the women's. Um, Bible study that's here, 3 o'clock to 4.30. Nope. See, I don't, I just read what is written. There is no women's Bible study. What? Nope. Women's Bible study today, 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. That's okay. So let me continue. Let's see if this next one's right. Let's see what we can do. Life groups. Those are happening. Writers, Ventons, and Sterners, and they are going through the book, Elephants in the Church. Pastor has books, if you would like a book, and it's not what you think. 
So it's not about real elephants, people, okay? All right. So anyways, if you would like a book, please get a book from Pastor. That would be great. Men's Retreat, Golden Bell. We talked about that last Sunday. Men, sign up March 17th through the 19th. There's still, the registration still open. It's $180. If you are not going because of the funds, please let Pastor Chris know. I'm going off script because apparently I can. If you need funds to help you go, please let him know. We will make sure everyone that wants to go is able to attend, just like we did for the women. So do not let the $180, that I will tell you guys, when we're planning these retreats, that is food, lodging, and that's about what it covers. So there's not a big pot of money that's going somewhere else. It's really to get you to the retreat. But if you need help with that, let us know. Happy to help, okay? All right, next announcement. If is coming in Castle Rock. If you have questions, please see Michelle. That's the 24th through the 25th at Beyond Church, okay? And again, we've had a really good turnout from our congregation, so would love to have women sign up for that. All right, that is all the announcements that I have, with the exception of Help Box. I keep saying spring's coming because I believe it. And I was just saying that, um, I, was, I was just telling Chris back there that uh, we haven't seen our backyard since before Christmas. Anybody else still have snow covered? Yeah, okay, us too. So I'm um, wanting to get some things done back there, but it's still a lot of snow. So um, that is not happening anytime soon. But spring, so we still need to take care of the community. It might not be gloves and warm hats and scarves, but there's plenty of other things that we could use, so please do so. And then, last but certainly not least, I'm really excited about this last announcement. We are going to start having yoga at the church, not during service, so don't get too excited. Okay, right? It is not during the sermon. It is on Thursdays, and Chris is doing his pose back there. I love it. Um, on every other Thursday, we will be doing yoga here at the church, and Casey has graciously said that she will lead us, and it's from 7 to 8. It's adults or teens. You're invited as well. A couple things. If you don't have a yoga mat, bring a beach towel. Bring something that you're comfortable to stand on. If you have a yoga mat, bring the yoga mat. But we are really excited about this. I appreciate her um, volunteering. If there's other activities that you guys think about, please let us know. We are really looking at how can we use our church building and not just on a Sunday morning. How can we have activities and be an outreach to the community and to each other? So let's continue to do that. I'm very excited about it. And it starts this Thursday, and then it'll be every other Thursday after that. So pretty great, right? And beginners, I've been assured that even I could do it. Beginners, it's just going to be stretching and then some things that you can do at home, so a lot of fun. So with that, let's stand and let's greet each other and great to see everyone. Don't seem to find the rhythm, just wanna sing the blues Feels like a song that never stops Feels like it's never gonna Gotta get that fire, fire back in my bones Before my heart, heart turns into stone So when somebody please pass the megaphone I'll shout it on the count of three One, two, three Oh, hear my prayer tonight Singing to the sky, give me strength to raise my voice. Let me testify. Oh, in my prayer tonight, cause this is do or die. The time has come to make a choice. 
Kiki down here. Well, let's uh, yeah, let's let's continue in worship. Um, just out of a mama's heart right now, can you guys just pray for my kid Samuel? He's starting to get a migraine, and if you know his journey, uh, those are no fun. Um, so pray with us real quick, and also uh, we have a couple people in our church that are navigating uh, some surgeries and some things happening this week. So let's just stop and pray. We believe that God is available to us, and uh, yeah, Jesus, 
we come to you with all of us, and we trust that you are um, available. We've seen you move before, and we know that you're available and your presence is with us today. So, Lord, for all the things that are before us, the things that we're um, wondering about, the, the, the battles we're facing, we ask that you would heal, that you would provide, that you would engage. Lord, um, would you touch my son right now? I lift him to you. I ask that you would silence this migraine in Jesus' name. Um, and for the, the people in this, in this church family that are facing a week full of scheduled things that are hard, um, for those who are facing surgery, for those who are facing tests, for those who are facing more chemo, we just lift them to you in faith, that you go before us and that you are available and that you love us and you care. Thanks, Jesus, that you are provider and refuge. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> we believe that in the midst of everything we face, that God is available to us. Um, so this morning, that's the wrong track. Let's do that one. That sounds better. We're going to sing, uh, the battle belongs to the Lord. And it does belong to him, amen? Everything that we face, we can lay before him. We can ask for his help. Our sorrows, our laments, our anger, we can give it to the Lord. So would you stand with us?
today? God's word says in Psalm 131, O oh Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me, but I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, O Connection Church, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Goodness. <laughs> Lord God, you are faithful. You are able to go before us in things that we don't know how to navigate. You're able to be the one that is our worth and our value. You're the one who speaks our name over us. So Lord, today... Thank you for being a God that challenges us to lean into your righteousness and your holiness. Lord, we want to be a church that seeks after your kingdom and seeks after you and nothing else. Lord, you are good. We give you praise. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to be a people of praise, that it will always be on our lips. Your love is devoted like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. Your love is enduring through the winter rain. And beyond the horizon with mercy for today faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be
scripture today to remain standing in the presence of the Lord invite him to speak to you through the word of God the one whose wrongdoing is forgiven whose sin is covered over is truly happy the one the Lord doesn't consider guilty in whose spirit there is no dishonesty that one is truly happy when I kept quiet, my bones wore out. I was groaning all day long, every day, every night, because your hand was heavy upon me. My energy was sapped as if in a summer drought, so I admitted my sin to you. I didn't conceal my guilt. I'll confess my sins to the Lord is what I said. Then you removed the guilt of my sin. That's why all the faithful should pray to you during troubled times, so that a great flood of water won't reach them. You are my secret hideout. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of rescue. I will instruct you and teach you about the direction you should go. I'll advise you and keep my eye on you. Don't be like some senseless horse or mule whose movement must be controlled with a bit and a bridle. Don't be anything like that. The pain of the wicked is severe, but faithful love surrounds the one who trusts the Lord. You who are righteous, rejoice in the Lord and be glad. All you whose hearts are right, sing out in joy. Mm -hmm. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dom, would you just hang on real quick? Let's, I want you to read that again. Um, you're just, you're a preacher, man. Um, <laughs> he looked at me like, what? <clears throat> God, we give you our time and our attention, and as we listen again to these words spoken, I ask that you would write it on our hearts, that we'd be available to correction, we'd be available to your spirit moving in us. Lord, I ask you to move in this church in a new way today. We invite your presence. We invite your voice to speak to us. Lord, it is not that you have stopped speaking. It is that often we are not listening. So, Lord, I ask that our ears would be open today as we hear the word of the Lord spoken. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, Dom. The one whose wrongdoing is forgiven, whose sinner covered over is truly happy, the one the Lord doesn't consider guilty, in whose spirit there is no dishonesty, that one is truly happy. When I kept quiet, my bones wore out. I was groaning all day long, every day, every night, because your hand was heavy upon me. My energy was sapped as if in a summer drought, so I admitted my sin to you. I didn't conceal my guilt. I'll confess my sins to the Lord, is what I said. Then you removed the guilt of my sin. That's why all the faithful should pray to you during troubled times so that a great flood of water won't reach them. You are my secret hideout. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of rescue. I will instruct you and teach you about the direction you should go. I'll advise you and keep my eye on you. Don't be like some senseless horse or mule whose movement must be controlled with a bit and a brittle. Don't be anything like that. The pain of the wicked is severe but faithful love surrounds the one who trusts the Lord. You are righteous. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. All you whose hearts are right, sing out in joy. This is the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm.
Just take a moment with your eyes closed to tell the Lord all the things that you need, all the things you're upset about, all the things that you're worried about and concerned about, all the things that you might be angry about. Just take a moment and lay those before the Lord. The things that seem unfair, unjust, undone. And ask Him, speak his love over you now. Listen for the voice of God. Say, I am faithful to you. I have never left. And then in response, church, sing these words to him. It never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up. 
runs up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love, oh, your love never fails, it never gives up on me. Thank you, Jesus, for being a faithful and present God, one that loves us. Days may be darkest, but your light is greater. You light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, you're rising higher with power to save, with power to save. Cause you dismissed to head to Kids Church today. As we go to prayer, um, before we get into the sermon, 
um, if you if you've noticed the 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 altars aren't here. Um, they're on the side here, and there's tables with the communion elements there. Um, as we go to prayer, I I, I want to offer you a, a couple uh, options here this morning. Um, um, during during prayer time, I I want to invite you to the tables of the Lord, the table of the Lord, um, if you feel so inclined. Um, uh, please feel free uh, to make your way there. The altars are there if you want to spend a few minutes with it. Um, but Sheree, you know what? Would you do something for me? I just noticed I didn't put the grape juice in the... It's just there. Um, um, uh, but I want you to have those moments on your own. If you, if you want um, uh, to take the, the bread, you can dip it in the juice there and... and and spend some moments at the altar. Um, you can do that during this prayer time, and then by the end of the service, we can do the same thing. But but I want to want to give this to you as well. That any time during the sermon, um, if you feel so inclined um, to just get up and and help yourself, the the communion table is indeed the story of Christ's body being broken for us and His shed His blood being shed on our behalf. That is the story. So when you come to the table of the Lord, um, you are coming with need, hopefully with desire for a little more of Him, um, and you are coming with declaration um, that He is Lord. Um, So know that. At this church here, we have what we call an open table. That means all are welcome to come to the table of the Lord. Um, But you must know those things. You must know that though you are welcome at the table, it is is a declaration um, of your desire, your hope, your need. Um, And the prayer from your pastor is that that it'll get you. Right, um, I used to tell my youth group when I was a youth pastor, there was, I don't know if you all remember, the old government uh, commercial, you are what you eat, right? <laughs> you know, you, you eat a heap of Twinkies, you might get soft in the middle, right? <laughs> so if you eat a little bit of Jesus, you might find righteousness pouring into you. Is that? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So, let's go to prayer this morning. I, I almost just got into my sermon, but let's go to prayer this morning. God in heaven, we, we do come to you um, this morning with need. We, we need you. We, we need your presence in our life. We need your grace to be revealed to us. We need your courage to move us in faith. We need your very presence to reveal to us your truth, to reveal to us your goodness, to reveal to us your righteousness. God, we need you in the midst of our fear. When we have physical ailments, we might feel fear trepidation, anxiety, and we need you. When we look at all that is going on in our world, we must declare Jesus come. When we see and feel the tensions in the air on global powers, and when we see the tensions in the air of economic instability, when we see the things of our earth that are wobbling, we say, Jesus, we need you. 
We, we need your very essence to permeate ourselves that we might live with courage, that we might indeed live with hope. Hope that you are at work. And God, as much as we want to shirk our responsibility and just let you do it, God, we need you to move us in courage, to participate with you in your redeeming efforts of this world, starting with those around us. God, may we be a people that speak with hope and love, grace, that you are moving in us. And God, I can't help but see hope popping up across the globe, too. I'm sure even stories that we don't know, but starting with Hasbury University awakening then seeing little pockets of your kingdom coming, your hope being revealed across the country. God, help us. May we grow in sensitivity and awareness of who you are and what you desire for us. God, may we be a bold people, unafraid of your presence, unafraid of what you ask of us. God, this morning, would you speak your words to us? May we hear you. Amen. Amen. Um, before we get into the sermon, um, we we need to we need to have a little familial talk. Not familiar, although it might be familiar. Familial, <laughs> a little family discussion. We are, if you, if you, uh, if you don't know, our uh, church fiscal year is May uh, to April. April's coming, so we have begun working on budget. We have begun looking at numbers, and um, I want to want to bring you up to speed on where we are. I don't want to spend too much time here, but I also don't want to just leave it. Because um, you guys, um, just right off the top, there is, there is no church on the planet that survives apart from the generosity of its people. They don't make a heap of money selling t-shirts, even if they do sell t-shirts. <laughs> they don't pay the bills by selling mugs with their logo on it. Church happens when people say, I'm a part of this thing, with every bit of them. Now, I'm not a legalist. You guys know this? (laughs) I haven't thrown down the gauntlet on this discussion ever. And I may or may not in this moment, (laughs) depending on how inspired I might get. Uh, But you must understand, and and I think you all do know this, that church survives on us. By the way, your pastors tithe too. (laughs) So it's not just we're asking you to do something that we're not going to do. Your your pastor also cleans the place. Mr. Milt finally retired, and we let him reluctantly. (laughs) <laughs> I miss, Milt, I miss though, our discussions when we're around here and you're, you know, cleaning and walking and talking. 
So, okay, so let me bring you up to speed. So a couple of, since Shree and I have been here, we've been talking staff people. And if you remember, Ken was and has still faithfully served the, the youth of this church and the district even. He continues in that. As we went along, though, we knew Ken had other responsibilities with his painting career and all that kind of stuff. And we were trying to, as new pastors, trying to find traction and space to cultivate and develop our staff. And so we had the discussion early on. We continued to have the discussion. And then you understand three and a half years into our tenure here, Three and a half years is about the time they say a pastor starts to kind of feel his momentum, feel his groove, if you will. He started to begin to feel a cadence about things. People start to think, ah, yeah, he might be my pastor. Mm -hmm. It takes that long for people to gain trust and relationship and all. And then you know what happened after three and a half years? COVID. COVID. And, and honest, this was interesting. Uh, during COVID, during pandemic and all this, financially, we seem to maintain. Now, I mean, that being said, the, the, the uh, what was it called, Anthony? The, the P -P -E, uh, PPE loan came that we were able to make use of, which, by the way, put uh, a, a new, new furnace and, and HVAC system on the roof. It was helpful. And we, we quickly um, went to preaching online since the building was empty. March 15, 2020, I believe it was. Shree was up at women's retreat. I was in here by myself preaching a sermon to my iPad with Ryan Gonzalez helping me with tech. And away we went. And I'd like to think, and I do think, that we, that we altered well. Um, we, we pivoted pretty well. For a small church um, with, with, with minimal uh, ability, in, in like financial, you know, we don't just have. So here we were. Okay, let me, let me speed this up. I don't want to spend all morning here. Um, but, but because during pandemic, we maintained a, a, a budget, we just copied and pasted from the year before, not really knowing how things were going to shake out. We maintained. And so about two years ago, 2000, um, uh, where would that be? Well, it was about 2020. We began having the discussion again with the church board about staffing. And the idea was this. We had money in the bank, and it was collecting dust. And it's been collecting dust for a lot of years, you guys. That's, that's not good stewardship. Collecting dust money is not good stewardship. Um, using the funds and the realities that God gives us is good stewardship. So that was the discussion. What are we going to do with this dusty money? Are we going to put it into the building? Or are we going to put it into staffing to help develop and help cultivate more ministry? That's the decision we made because we had been doing fine. We were, we were ticking along okay. So that's where we hired Kristen. We brought David in. And it's been, it's been good in a relational way. Um, so we maintain, we're nice people. We've maintained good relationships, I think. In fact, about six months ago, I had a pastoral review. District superintendent comes in with the church board and says, hey, how are you guys doing? Relationally, it was good. It's great. And still, it's great. We've had the discussion recently. Are we still good? Chris and Cherie still here? Yeah, I think so. Um, but to stop dragging this out, you guys, um, giving is dropping off the cliff lately. Real bad. We will not make budget this year. And we aren't spending a heap. In fact, we're spending very little. So, so here we are. We, we have a staff person that is dedicated and faithful to helping us develop this thing. 
Um, but you guys, we can't, money doesn't just fall out of the sky. So, so you need to know that. Because we're coming to the end of the fiscal year and we're going to have more of the discussion, not because I'm a pastor that loves having the discussion. I don't. I kind of just wish people understood, yeah, I should give a little. <laughs> and then I wouldn't have to say anything. And then we just go on paying the bills. But, okay, that being said, you guys, um, we're at a place. Together, we're at a place. I know. You all love it. It all falls on the pastor eventually because he's the boss. But it doesn't, to be honest with you. It's us. It's us. We're either in it or we're not. Um, if, you are, if you are desiring to look at the books and talk about it all, the books here are always open. You're, you're welcome to it. If you're a member, you can't. If you're not a member, you, you, don't, you don't have any commitment level there. But if you're a member, you have a voice here. And if you want to say, hey, I think you're doing bad stewardship, then come talk to us. We'll be glad to have the conversation. Um, but, but that's where we're at, coming to the year, looking at money going, whoa, yee. Uh, okay, all right. So let me say that, all that to be said. You guys, I am not fearful. Your pastor is not afraid. Your pastor has worked a pastor job and other jobs at the same time before. He can do it again. I'm not, and I, I'm not trying to be weird, or, but I'm just saying, I'm not afraid. I'm hopeful for what is happening around here. I, I am. I Don't ask me why, other than I guess the Lord is kind of like, hey, Chris, keep on. Hey, Gideon's army comes to mind, right? God does with little, often, maybe more often than not, I don't know. Um, so, you guys, we're not in, now let me, not, let me just, and I'll wrap it up, okay. Um, I'm not trying to tell you that next month we're closing the doors. It's not where we're at. We're not dead in the water. We're not like, it's not that dire, but I need you to understand it will be if we don't, if, if, if we don't, if we don't pay attention. Um, and so that's, that's where we're at. So, um, I'm, I'm giving that to you. I'm sharing my plate with you. Um, uh, you can push it aside or you can ask the Lord what he wants you to know and what he wants you to do. Um, um, but just, just, just know that, um, that, that um, church survives on the participation of its folks. Um, that's how it goes. Um, and, the, and, the, and the Lord asks of us for that. And that, this is my transition to my sermon, <laughs> that is a spiritual discipline. Giving is a spiritual discipline. And what I mean by that is that as people, we often make lords of things that aren't the Lord. And we usually need to practice killing that Lord. You understand, you, you know, you understand what I'm saying? So, so like... Well, we're on it. If, if money is your Lord, then you need to practice killing it because it will kill you eventually. It will take you, <laughs> at least in your faith. This is the spiritual language of it, you guys. This is, so in all of it, so let's understand, Lent, Ash Wednesday, all this kind of thing. This is to say when we fast, when we set something aside, it is to say that thing that I'm setting aside is not Lord of my life. My morning coffee is not Lord of my life. I can and I will set it aside, if indeed that's what you chose to. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the language. That's the language of the story 
of God at work in the world. When Christ asks us to come and follow me, he's asking us to declare him as Lord and nothing else. So we seek him first in all that we do. So, so here's the story this morning. Genesis, chapter 2, starting verse 15. I'll read chapter 2, 15 and 17, and then we're going to flip over to chapter 3 and read a couple verses there, and then we're going to flip over to Matthew uh, chapter 4. So Genesis chapter 2, starting verse, verse 15. The Lord God took the human and settled him in the garden of Eden to farm it and to take care of it. The Lord God commanded the human, eat your fill from all the garden's trees, but don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because on the day you will eat from it, you will die. Flipping over to chapter 3, we'll read, starting verse 1, the snake was the most intelligent of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say that you shouldn't eat from the tree in the garden? And the woman said to the snake, we may eat the fruit of the garden's trees, but not the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. And God said, don't eat from it. Don't touch it or you will die. The snake said to the woman, you won't die. God knows that on the day you eat from it, you will see clearly and you will be like God. This is interesting. A little side note. They were already, how was humanity made? In the image of God already. So we already know this is, this guy's baloney, right? Because we're already made in the image of God. So when he says you're going to be like God, he's like, this is, anyways, okay. The woman saw that the tree was beautiful with delicious food and that the tree would provide wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it, and also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then they saw, then they both saw clearly and knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made garments for themselves. Now, if you would, flip over to Matthew chapter 4. Let's go for where we, where we started. Chapter 4. Sorry, wrong. Chapter 4, starting verse 1. Then the Spirit led Jesus up into the wilderness so that the devil might tempt him. After Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was starving. The tempter came to him and said, Since you are God's Son, command these stones to become bread. And Jesus replied, It is written, People won't live only by bread but by every word spoken by God. After that, the devil brought him to a holy city and stood him at the highest point of the temple. And he said to him, Since you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, I will command my angels concerning you, and they will take you up in their hands so that you won't hit your foot on a stone. So Jesus replied again, It is written, Don't test the Lord your God. And the devil brought him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said, I'll give you all these if you bow down and worship me. And Jesus responded, go away, Satan, because it is written, you will worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil left him. Then angels came and took care of him. This is the word of the Lord this morning. Thanks be to God. Um, so I, I, I want to use now a third biblical story to illustrate and tell the story of where we're at here. Jacob and Esau. You remember these guys? Uh, both of them yahoos, by the way. We can say that because we're looking back on history and seeing their story, right? We, you know. 
In a hundred years, somebody will look back and say, man, that Chris guy, what a yahoo he was, right? <laughs> I might say that when I'm, when, I, when I'm older. I might look back, man, that 40-year-old Chris, what a... Anyways, Jacob and Esau, you remember twins? Esau comes first, Jacob comes out, hanging on, the heel grabber, Jacob. Jacob, yeah, I was just listening in the Bible Project. You know, the Bible Project opens up all sorts of fun uh, elements of biblical storytelling. Biblical storytelling, it, it, it uses all sorts of ways to, to give hints of the characters. So does anybody remember Jacob was, um, what was his, what was his um, uh, physical appearance? Do you remember? Smooth skin. What, what else? Anything else? He was soft. He was a mama's boy. No offense, anybody? Right? It, it, and I, I say that. I know that's probably not politically correct to say. I apologize. But you know the meaning. You understand the, the, the kind of the dig, right? That's the, he, was, he, was, he was soft. What about Esau? Hunter, Ronnie, he was furry. He had hair. Gaston, maybe, right? Mm. Right? So, so you might think, oh, man, Jacob, he's a, kind of a slimy guy. Yeah, he's a used car salesman. Sorry, if any, I'm pulling all the stops today, right? You know, <laughs> sorry, if you sell cars, I apologize. Um, and just so you know, if you look at any of the statistics, pastors in culture right now are right below uh, car salesmen in their people's trust of them. Um, <laughs> so, so, so Jacob and Esau. Esau's out in the field, right? He's out doing his thing. He's working. Jacob's in the kitchen. No offense to those who like to cook. It's not, it's not. You, you know where I'm going. We're telling a story here, right? The Bible said it first. Um, Esau comes in, and he's hungry, and he's hungry, and I need something to eat. Give me something to eat. I need some beef stew. Jacob, hook me up. Jacob, being the sly fox that he is, sees his moment, ha-ha, I'll, I'll give you some soup, Esau. It's going to cost you, but I'll give you some soup. Esau's like, okay, give it to me. What's it going to cost? Whatever. Just, I'm hungry now. Satisfy me now. And Jacob's like, well, that's easy. Just give me your birthright. Give me your God-given future, Esau. And you can have soup. That's a terrible deal. But Esau was hungry. And you make bad decisions when you're hungry. Don't go shopping when you're hungry. Don't talk to your sleazy younger brother when you're hungry. Right? Esau says, man, okay. I'm sure Esau's probably thinking in the back of his head, yeah, right, whatever. Just give, just, just give me the soup. Yeah, Jacob, whatever you say, I'll kill you later. Give me, just give me the, like, just give me the soup. So that's the deal. And it begins to escalate. You remember, how does it escalate? His mom gets in on the gig. It just gets bigger. And now there's not just a brother problem here. There's a mama problem here now, too. And then there's a daddy problem. And then there's this, all this stuff. You see the escalation. Esau says, I want what I want. Now, do you see the story that we just read happening in this story? The sleazy snake comes along and says, hey, Eve. Hey, Eve, I've got some soup for you. 
It's good soup. Which, by the way, as you read that, Adam was there too. So let's not get all, like, male-female on this story. Adam was there. And the soup looked good to him too. I got some soup for you. Adam, Eve, I'll give you soup if you just give me your God-given future. You give me your birthright. This is the story. God has beautiful plans for you. But I got soup. I got yummy soup. And I know you're hungry right now. I mean, look at that. That's shiny. It's enticing. And you know, the story of Jesus is the story of the second Adam. The second or the, the new humanity that Jesus comes to redeem. So Jesus mimics the story. He steps into human history. We're not just talking a physicality, although that. Jesus stepping into humanness is not just his physical. He steps into the story of human brokenness. And so here's Lent. Here's fasting. Here it is to lament. God, I lament that I desire the soup. I fast by setting the soup aside and saying, no, I don't want it. I am going to walk the way Jesus walked. I'm going to set the soup aside and say, no, humanity does not live on bread alone, but by the very voice of God and words of the Lord God Almighty. Lament, knowing that we desire the soup, and knowing probably we've taken the soup before, and saying, oh God, forgive me. Fasting. Setting the soup aside. Say, I don't need it. I don't need your lies. Satan, the slippery one, I don't need your lies. I need the Lord. That's what's happening when revival breaks out. When revival or awakening happens, that's, that's what's happening. People are going, oh my goodness, put the soup away. Get, no, I don't need the soup. I need the Lord. I, I, need, I need God. I, I need his presence in my life. I need his hope and I need his future. There's hope in that story. But as soon as we declare ourselves Lord of ourselves, then the God-given future that's, that is offered to us is the thing set aside. God has a future for us. He has a future for you. He has a desire that you, us, would seek after Him in deep and profound, that we would come to a place in our life that we know our need for him and not the slippery, slimy soup that is offered. You might, you might be able, you might be able to name the soup in your life. I can. Not in yours, not someone I'm saying. I, maybe, but I, I mean in mine. 
I could probably come up with a, a couple things. A life of faith is not just a life of church. A life of faith is not just a life of attendance. A life of faith is not even just a life of, of, of writing a check. A life of faith is one that postures ourselves before the Lord, that says the Lord is the Lord and I will follow him. I, I will follow Jesus into the wilderness into the scary places, into those places of unknown. And to say I've trust in God is to say I desire his future for me, not my future for me. And so in all this conversation concerning church finances or whatever, 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 my hope my hope more than anything. Now, let me, let me just say maybe a, a, a silly statement, but I think it, I think it helps us. If we, if we had to close the doors, but we were deep in faith and stepping out in deep, profound love of neighbor and all of that, if our faith was growing deep as we lock the doors, then so be it. The motivation here, the desire here is to say, man, will we, will, will, will we be a people of faith? Do, do, we, do we trust the Lord? I know the world looks scary right now. It doesn't look like I'm going to get retirement. all right, I'll be a Walmart greeter. It'll be fun. I, 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 hope, you're, I hope you're hearing. I hope you're hearing. Um, we, 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 want, we want to do ministry here. And you know what that means? That means telling a story that has hope behind it, inviting people to a place that loves and cares and graces them, but not only inviting them into this place, but inviting them into this place. My, my, my neighbors, Rick, Melissa, MJ, Scott, Amanda, Hartford, the little dude, Pat. We asked Pat to come to church once. Didn't go well. We're still friends. <laughs> There's a beautiful message here. And that message continues. I'll loop back around. That God has a future for us. It's beautiful. And it brings life. So I'll, I'll wrap it up with this. In the beginning, the Genesis narrative, Adam and Eve were to, to till the garden. And, and, and what that meant, we might, we, we might think to ourselves, the just the, the sweat of your brow running the rototiller or the plow and, you know, looking and the horse and the horse is pooping and you're digging and you're, you know, we think of all of this. That comes later in the story, remember, by the sweat of your brow. That comes later. But the idea was that Adam and Eve, these people, they were created to say, hey, this is all good. Remember, it's good, it's good, it's good. Seven times it's good. The seventh time it is very good. And the people, the humanity was to 
cultivate it, to care for it, so that what? So that it would be got more life. And we, we might need to split hairs here a minute as we wrap up. You can bring a breathing person into the world, right? We've got a little baby. Many of you have, but we're, it's called cradle care. We're foster parents, so we got called for cradle care. We'll care for this little baby until somebody adopts it. Some of the stories that we hear in these context is there are people that bring a breathing person into the world. They brought life into the, but they're not giving life. Does that make sense? It's one thing to have a breathing human, but to cultivate life for that baby. So, so the hope is, the hope that God has, that Jesus has, has for humanity is not just that we bring more people, but that we cultivate life. Does that make make sense to life? Life abundantly is what Jesus calls that we might have this kind of... So this is the motivation we have here, the Connection Church, that we would be a people that aren't just saying, hey, pray this prayer, but saying, hey, Come with us on this journey of life that begets life, that begets life, that is dynamic and full and life-giving and gracious and challenging and hopeful. That we might be a people that don't just retire to the pews. Yeah? I hope, you guys, um, I hope, for a lot of things. In the coming months, we're going to continue to have conversations about some of our hopes. A few months back, we had our service, you know, town hall kind of service Sunday, and there were a lot of hopes that you all had. We're going to begin to open it up, say, okay, are we, are, are we going to be a dynamic, hope-filled, life-giving church? Is that what we're going to do? Boy, God help us. Gideon, man, from 30K to 300. And he did more with 300 than, right? I don't want to do that. I don't want, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do the Gideon thing. I want us to maintain But if the Gideon thing brings us, you guys, I'm starting to rattle now. I'll wrap it up. I hope you hear my heart. There's life to be had here. There's life in Christ. There's life in the story of God and Jesus. And though the bowl of soup sometimes looks good, let us not. Let us follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Say no to the bowl of soup. And allow his future to be our future. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stand with me if you're able and hear this, receive this benediction. Now, may the God of hope, the God of a beautiful, redeemed, life-giving future, be made known to you in these days. May he reveal to you his goodness and his grace in these coming days. May you grow in awareness of his desire for you. And may you know his love. Amen. Go in his peace.